everyone, and welcome to Get Started Fast with Avid Sibelius 7.5, presented by Avid Blogs. My name is Philip Rothman, and I'm a composer, orchestrator, and music preparer in New York. I run NYC Music Services, a full-service music preparation firm where we use Sibelius on a daily basis. I've composed and orchestrated for major orchestras, feature films, and television programs, and I've prepared music for leading composers and publishers. You may also know me from the user's blog, SibeliusBlog.com, where I cover tips and news about Sibelius and the field of music notation. In this five-part tutorial series, we'll go through the basics of Sibelius 7.5, so you can get started fast and make music with it as quickly as possible. These tutorials are designed mostly for those of you that are new to Sibelius, but existing users may find some helpful tidbits along the way, so please stick around. For this lesson, we'll concentrate on the most fundamental elements of music notation, notes and rhythms. We'll also cover how to copy, select, move, and delete notes. When you open Sibelius 7.5, you'll notice the Quick Start dialog. We'll cover this more in our next lesson, so for now, I'll just click on Treble Staff, then click Create. This brings up a basic treble clef staff in 4-4 time in C major. In Sibelius, you can enter notes using several methods, and we'll cover all of them here. The simplest method is to use the mouse, but as you'll soon see, it's also usually the slowest way. You'll notice the keypad that appears on the bottom right of your screen. You can drag it around if you like. To start entering notes, simply click on your desired duration. Here I've chosen a quarter note. The cursor turns blue to show that Sibelius is carrying a note. Click in the score where you'd like the note to appear. I'll enter a few more notes in the same way. You may have noticed that you don't need to reselect the duration if it doesn't change from note to note. If you happen to make a mistake, just use the up or down arrow keys to move the pitch. Or hit the escape key to exit out of the note entry mode and drag the note head where you'd like it to go. Hit escape once you're done dragging the note. To add a dotted note, click the main rhythmic value and select the dot. Be sure to select this rhythm dot and not the staccato dot, which is actually an articulation and we'll get to that in just a few moments. To add accidentals, simply choose one prior to clicking in your score. You'll notice that Sibelius automatically adds rests to fill out the measure. If you'd like a rest of a different value, just click the duration of the rest, then click the rest key to enter the rest. To add more than one note to a chord, just click where you'd like the notes to go. Let's add a few more notes. To add a tie to a note, click the tie key after you've placed your note. Remember, ties are different than slurs. Ties extend the duration of a note, while slurs connect notes of different pitch to make them legato. Don't use a tie when you intend a slur, and vice versa. We'll cover slurs in a later lesson. To add articulations like accents to your notes, click the articulation before placing your note in the score. You can add more than one articulation at a time. To stop adding articulations, just click the articulation key again and continue entering your notes. 
If you like, you can click on a virtual piano keyboard to play in your notes. On the View tab, click Panels if it already isn't open, then click Keyboard. By the way, this collection of buttons at the top of your screen, it's known as the ribbon, and we'll cover that more in a later lesson. The keyboard appears at the bottom of your screen, but you can move it and resize it. Click the notes on your keyboard to enter notes, instead of clicking in the score. As you can see, adding notes with a mouse is extremely intuitive, but also very time consuming. Let's speed up the process by making use of the computer keyboard instead, with a method known as alphabetic input. First, I'll close the keyboard panel, although there's no harm in leaving it open if you like. If you have a second display, you could also move it to a second display. To use alphabetic input, we first need to tell Sibelius where to enter the notes. I'll scroll up a little bit, hit Escape to exit note input mode, and then I'll click this bar. Then I'll hit the N key, N for notes, of course. You'll soon find that this is one of many one-letter keyboard shortcuts in Sibelius. Notice how the keypad panel corresponds to a numeric keypad on a computer keyboard. Instead of clicking on the keypad, you can hit the corresponding key on your numeric keypad to make a selection. For instance, I would hit 5 for a half note, 6 for a whole note, 4 for a quarter note, and so on. Then, instead of clicking in the score, I'll just type the letter name of the note I wish to enter. The process is the same, but you'll see how much faster it is. Notice how the letters A through G on your computer keyboard are all easily reachable with your left hand, leaving you to keep your right hand free to select the rhythms. When using alphabetic input, Sibelius will choose the note in the octave nearest to the preceding note. If you need to adjust the octave, you can move it with the arrow keys like I showed you before, but to do it even more quickly, that is, to move it by an octave, Hold down the Command key on Mac or Control on PC, then hit the up or down arrow key in the direction you wish to move. You'll find that in Sibelius, the Command key on Mac or Control on PC means do this but more for a wide variety of actions. To add notes to a chord using the alphabetic input method, just type the interval above where you'd like your new note to appear relative to the selected note. For instance, I'd like to add a new note, B, which is a third above this G. So I would type 3, but not on my numeric keypad, I'll type it on the row of keys near the top of the computer keyboard. But notice Sibelius places a B natural. No problem. I'll simply hit escape, then hit the natural sign on the keypad. In most cases, naturals and accidentals on the keypad, not to mention articulations, are like on-off switches. If it's off, hit it to turn it on, and if it's on, hit it to turn it off. I'll then add the rest of my chord, use the right arrow key to move to the next bar, and press N to resume note entry. Did you notice that? I used the right arrow key to navigate between notes or rests. You can use the left arrow key to do the same in the other direction. And remember how I said the command key on Mac or control on PC means do this but more? Hold down that modifier key and use the left or right arrow keys to move to a whole bar at once. 
OK, so I'll press N to resume note entry. This time, I'll enter the top note in the chord first. To add notes below my selected note, this time, I'll hold down the Shift key, then type the interval number. Notice how the zero key is used for rests. If I feel like using my mouse to click in a note, I can do so. You don't have to switch between tools while you're using one method or another. You can click one note in and type in the next one if you choose. Let's type in a few more notes. By default, all notes are entered into what is known in Sibelius as Voice 1. These notes will be colored blue when they are selected. If I wish to add another voice, I'd first hit Escape if I need to, to exit out of the note input mode. Then I would select where I'd want the notes to go, then type N for notes. Now I can either click the voice number on the keypad, or using the shortcut Option on the Mac or Alt on PC, plus the voice number, I would tell Sibelius in which voice I'd like to place the notes. To place notes in voice 2, I type Option 2, and then enter notes in the usual way. Sibelius supports up to four simultaneous voices. If you have a MIDI keyboard, you can use a couple more note entry methods to speed things up even more. First, I'll show you my favorite, step time entry. The rhythmic part of step time entry works the same as alphabetic input. First, I'll select my bar, type N for notes, and hit 4 for a quarter note if it isn't already selected. But instead of typing the note names on my computer keyboard, I'll play them on my MIDI keyboard. The nice part about this is that you can play in chords all at once. Sibelius will make its best guess regarding enharmonic notes, but if you need to respell a note enharmonically, just hit the return key after playing in the note. You can see how, with a little bit of practice, step time can often be the most efficient way to enter in notes. Finally, if you're a good keyboard player, or even just okay like me, you can record your music in real time by using what's known as flexitime input. Let's select where we'd like to record the music. Then we'll go to the Play tab. You'll see some controls one of which is a red button, which of course is the record button. Get ready because we're about to start recording in real time. Sibelius will helpfully give me a one bar count off. When I'm finished, to stop recording, I'll just hit the space bar, or I could also click this big blue stop button. I did pretty well, but if I need to correct any errors, it's easy enough to do. These two bars look okay. This third bar, I rushed the eighth notes a little bit. No problem. I'll just select this note and make it an eighth note. Sibelius helpfully gets rid of the extra sixteenth note and the tie. I'll right arrow over to the next note, remove the rhythm dot. Remember, that's also like an on-off switch 
and keep moving along. I'll change the 16th note to an 8th note. This looks okay. I'll change this enharmonic note by pressing return. I'll renotate this even though it's rhythmically correct. I'll renotate it to an 8th note followed by a tie, right arrow, and then type E on my computer keyboard. Everything else looks good with the exception of this very last note. I'll hit escape to stop carrying a note, select the whole note, and make it a half note. Of course, Sibelius fills in the rest of the measure. To round off this lesson, let's look at how to select, copy, move, and delete notes. We already know how to select one note at a time by clicking and moving around with the left or right arrow keys. To delete a note, just select it and hit delete. Sibelius will replace the note with a rest. You can make what's known as a passage selection by selecting a note or rest, holding down shift, and hitting the right or left arrow keys to extend the passage. You can also hold down shift and click to extend the passage as well. Let's hit escape to remove our selection. If you haven't noticed already, you can think of the escape key as your get out of jail free key. If you have a selection, or if you're entering notes, or doing many other things in Sibelius, hitting escape once or twice will usually return you to the default state. If you click within any part of a bar, except for the notes, you'll find that you can select the entire bar at once. Double clicking will select all the bars on that system. Triple click and you'll select all the music in the entire piece for that instrument. If you click outside the staff in an empty space in your score, you'll remove the selection. This, of course, is the same as hitting escape. Now that you know how to make a selection, you can work with it. If you'd like to move all these notes up or down at once, you can by using the up or down arrow keys. You can, of course, delete the notes by hitting delete. You can add intervals the same way we did for single notes by using the numbers on your keyboard to add an interval up or hold down shift to add an interval down. You can copy music by holding down option on Mac or alt on PC and clicking the destination where you'd like the music to appear. If you option or alt click into a bar that already has music in it, Sibelius will replace the existing music. If you'd like to make an immediate repeat of a selection, hit the R key for repeat, of course. This wraps up our first lesson. In lesson two, we'll cover setting up your score and adding instruments, getting around the Sibelius interface in more detail, and navigating around your score, including our very first look at Sibelius 7.5's new timeline feature. To learn how to create music without bounds and deliver higher quality, inspiring music, visit avidblogs.com slash music.